Extraction arrived at mother base. So I guess I don't really have to mess around with staff development. Development project has been added. I can get Miller to just do everything automatically. I guess I'll check in on it from time to time, but so like double the length of the playthrough. Oh, they love the little thing, scores and points and enough with the credits, man. Just an excuse for more Hideo Kojima to appear. <laughs> I, I honestly don't like this format, I'm sorry. I get that they're episodic, but come on, it's not necessary. I guess I should listen to these at some point as well, but again, it's all just going to be a waste of time. Hmm. The effect will last longer than a tranquilizer round. Okay, we can actually listen. Mission list updated. Boss, I know you haven't been back long, but I prepared a list of missions for you. Open your eye droid. Okay, let's listen to some of these. I guess the yellow ones, ones I haven't listened to before, or they're important. You were hospitalized in Dekelia, a British sovereign base area on Cyprus. It's part of British overseas territory that falls outside of Cypriot jurisdiction. You got moved from Cuba's little America right into Cyprus's little Britain. Why Dekelia? The UK and the US remain close allies. The last place Cypher would think to look for you is inside their own system. That's what kept you safe in British Military Hospital for nine years. The safest place from a whale is inside its own belly. You were a regular Geppetto. Well, it wasn't Pinocchio who led me out to safety. So who was that guy? Cypher went so far as to attack British territory, burning their own ally. That's how badly they wanted you dead. He said I was in a British Military Hospital. But the doctor had a Greek accent. They hire locally easier to trust them. De Kelly is also home to Greek Cypriots, after all. What about the Turks? They haven't returned to the south. Not yet. The Cyprus dispute is still a long way from resolved. The country is just as split as it was in 74. Turkish Cypriots in the north, Greek Cypriots in the south. Between them, the Green Line, the UN established. And De Kelly sits right on top of it. It does. Part of the buffer zone between the two groups. Another reason it was the perfect place to hide you. Easy to spot any outsiders snooping around. So how do things stand? Now, last year, the Turks declared that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is an independent state. Though it's only Turkey that recognizes it. In the past, the Greeks and Turks lived side by side in the same villages. There are reasons to fight. Those came from the outside. Greece, Turkey, Britain, America. They all had their own stake in pitting the two sides against each other. But once you spark something like this, it's impossible to control. Both sides build up grudges like debt, without the foresight to see that each act of revenge just fans the flames, and then it's too late for other nations to rush in with peace talks. The embers keep on smoldering. Each nation's arrogance only breeds anarchy. The world is paralyzed by this hunger for revenge. Cyprus is no different. All right, hold on. So, from what I understand, the yellow ones are probably kind of important to the story, and the white ones are kind of extras. So, here's how it's going to go with these. Um, it's unlikely that when I complete this game, I'm going to have time to play it again in any kind of extra detail for quite some time. So, what I'd like to do is to try and listen to everything that I can while I have the chance, because I've always enjoyed knowing as much as I can about the story. So, for that reason, I'm going to try and listen to all of these cassette tapes, but obviously for you guys that either aren't interested or whatever, it's going to be it's going to kind of bloat the episodes so what I'll probably do is at the begin of, beginning of any kind of extended cassette listening session I'll put an annotation to say you know you can skip the next six minutes or skip to like 14 minutes to to get on with the mission so that way those of you that want to listen can listen and if you're not interested you just want to see the gameplay you can skip ahead so that's probably how I'll do it let's listen to some more stuff because we've got a lot to listen to and I might even end the session once we're done
we're changing ships? No, we can't go sailing the Suez in a whaler. The Suez Canal. When did they reopen it? Not long after you were attacked. Once they finished sweeping it for mines after the Arab-Israeli conflict. Can you stand? We're gonna transfer to a container ship for passage through the Suez. Our destination is Pakistan, Afghanistan's neighbor to the south. There, we disembark and head via Peshawar to the Zero Line, the border. We'll travel to the Khyber Pass by road. And then? We continue on horseback. Afghanistan's main roads are under Soviet control. We'll need to go around them. It'll be all narrow, winding paths through the mountains. We'll do better on horseback. It's a local guerrilla tactic. They use the higher ridges to avoid air recons. Then they charge down the mountains for ambushes. The Soviets still haven't devised a counter strategy. Our time frame is only half as much as we really need. It'll be a tough march. Better horses than boats. Well, it'll make for good physiotherapy. Take the time to get used to that new arm. All right, from what I can understand, um, the white ones, they, they just seem to bloat things out. I mean, it's long enough as it is. And if I start getting involved with all the white ones as well, it's going to take me forever. So I think I'm only going to listen to the yellow ones because, I, you know, I don't have as much time as I used to to play this stuff. And if it's going to take me like a half an hour every time I want to sit down and listen to some tapes, it's, it's going to take too long. So let's just uh, listen to the yellow ones. Miller told me about what happened in the Caribbean nine years ago. You do remember Miller. You'd formed a private army with him. An army with no allegiance to a nation. I remember, but... I see. You're not sure what's fact and what's a fantasy caused by the coma. It's still all a mess, huh? All I can do is tell you the facts as they were told to me. I've gone easy on you up until now. But this is where the hard stuff begins. <sighs> 1974, the year before you entered your coma. You were in Colombia, operating with a small unit of men, basically mercenaries. Miller was among them. Miller was trying to find a way to turn his and your talents into a line of work. He was looking to start a business where you would fight on behalf of others around the world, those who needed military force. But the reality was, at that time, you didn't have enough gear to equip your own men. Then Miller came across this client, it was a huge job he was offering, but you had a shot at pulling it off. You accepted it and headed into Costa Rica. The client even threw in an offshore facility in the Caribbean. The mother base. That would be your new base of operations. Miller sure did have a head for business. As your mission went on, your unit grew and grew. More weapons, more money. Before you knew it, you were commanding 300 men. As the organization got bigger, your military power swelled to match. It got so the international community couldn't afford to ignore you. You were just too damn successful for your own good. You, your men, had worn out your welcome. Everyone was out for you. East, West, First World, Third. It was only a matter of time before someone took you down. And that was XOF. Officially, they're an anti-terror unit under the CIA. In reality, they're Cypher's private strike force. They lured you to Cuba using Chico, the Nicaraguan revolutionary kid, and Paz, a mole who worked for Cypher as bait. While you were gone, XOF, posing as a nuclear inspection team, stormed Mother Base. At the same time, C4 they placed on the strut legs went off. The whole thing went down in minutes. XOF. Kisses and hugs, followed by a big F.U. All because of Miller's blind spot. A back door into Mother Base no one suspected. You remember a certain scientist. Huey was responsible for bringing the inspection team on board. Giving the enemy a perfect opportunity to hit you at home. You were returning from Cuba when it happened. Mother Base came damn close to taking you with it into the Caribbean. Those of your men out on assignment returned right away. They refused to believe the wreckage in the water they found was Mother Base. But they checked the coordinates again and again, until reality finally settled in. You were supposed to die that day. That was XOF's primary objective. As far as most folks know, you did. The first doctor to see you wasn't even sure what he was looking at. Before they'd even finished operating, your men moved you to that hospital in Cyprus. 
It was a woman named Eva who arranged that. Rings a bell, hmm? Most men in your condition would have been written off right from the start. But you survived. You went straight down to hell, and they pulled you out. Your eye wide open. Full of venom. The days of Naked Snake are long gone. Welcome back, Venom Snake. This world still needs you. So there we go, that one summed up basically the events of Ground Zeroes, everything that we saw during that game. So, I mean, that kind of one hour mission and all the cutscenes could have been summed up in two minutes and 23 seconds. So, the Metal Gear Solid 3 Naked Snake that we all know and love, he is no more. Now it's all about revenge and getting Cypher back for what they did to us nine years ago during the events of Ground Zeroes. So yeah, it seems like I've heard that uh, the story in this game, a lot of people have used the word kind of incomplete. And as a kind of counterpoint, a lot of people have said you really need to listen to all of the tapes to make sure you uh, have a full handle on the story and to fill in those missing gaps. Is that the best way to do it? I don't think so. But that's why also preemptively I want to make sure I listen to everything so that in my mind I have uh, as few holes as possible. And they seem to be doing a good job of kind of explaining how things are going. So we'll continue to, to check out the, the yellow cassettes. Try this on. A prosthetic arm. Yeah, Miller was calling it the arm that wasn't there. The physiotherapy's going well. Your arm's bulked up enough for it to fit. There. Perfect. A little time with it, and it'll work better than the real thing. What do you think? Huh. I can still feel my real arm. Well, you better get used to this one quick. You have any pain? Every now and then. Where? My fingertips. My left fingertips. Uh, sounds like phantom pain. Your brain still remembers your old hand. Yeah. What about your vision? Can you see okay? Yeah, at the moment. Now, the shrapnel in your skull is pressing on your optic nerve. I'm told any hard impact could have an effect on your visual cortex. Yeah, the doctor mentioned that. Your brain might process visual information incorrectly. In other words, you could have hallucinations. You might see things that aren't there, or not see things as they really are. You experience any of that? I think so. When? Right after I wake up. Colors look faded. Colors, huh? Well, that's not a major concern in and of itself, but it could mean the difference between life and death in the field. You'll need to watch out for that. I will. All right. You should continue your physio. We'll be arriving soon. It's the last chance you'll get. Hmm. You see, that's interesting stuff, because playing as a, as a character that's, that's going to be prone to this kind of stuff is very interesting and obviously you can see the massive kind of piece of shrapnel that's lodged into his head so that's going to make things very interesting as we move on and obviously explains to some extent the stuff that we saw at the beginning um, so these are all going to be whites right I guess of these if there's anything that seems really interesting I can kind of check it out for example where is zero seems like an interesting thing because as you as you know Metal Gear heads will know zero is like one of the pivotal figures in the entire franchise Zero created Cypher, an information network to tap into every corner of the globe. Woven together, Cypher's arteries make the world just one big organism. And that's not all. It also monitors the thorn in Zero's side. That's you, tracking your coordinates wherever you might go. The further you strayed from your roots, the larger Zero became. It's as if he was trying to close the gap between you. But before long, he disappeared from public life. Only a few people had direct contact with him. For a time, I was one of them. Then a year after you fell into your coma, he slipped out of sight entirely. Since then, nothing. No photos, no recordings, not even a reliable rumor as to his whereabouts. I tried every method I could think of, but Zero was gone. Freed of his control, his creation, his power continued to grow. Cypher is a great beast, and Zero was its spine. But even without him, it's endured, <laughs> evolved. But now its body is rotting, riddled with parasites. Parasites like the ones who attacked you nine years ago in the Caribbean, and then at the hospital. 
Cypher's Black Ops unit. XOF. They learned where you were and came to wipe the slate clean. So who's in charge of Cypher nowadays then? If Zero is nowhere to be seen. I remember in Metal Gear Solid 2 there used to be a conversation about the Patriots AI and the Patriots eventually running themselves and all this kind of stuff. Is it like a similar type thing where even though Zero is not there it's, it's kind of it runs itself now. I don't know. So let's see. The man on fire who looks a lot like Vulcan. Snake, I wanted to ask you about the man on fire. What do you remember from the hospital? Anything we can use? Well, he took off the moment the sprinklers started up. Sprinklers? The fire system? And when he got sprayed with water from the burst pipe, it slowed him down. When we escaped on horseback, he wouldn't cross the river either. And then it started to rain. And he disappeared. Water against fire. Is it that simple? I mean, it makes sense. It's just hard to believe it would work on a guy like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it is really Vulcan and it's like a hallucinated vision of Vulcan or something, then Vulcan was electricity, so maybe that's why the water's still effective against him or something. I don't know. Or maybe it actually has nothing to do with Vulcan. It's just another guy that we don't even know about. So hold on. Please select a mission. Right. I've taken the job offer as Diamond Dogs has received and made a list of those I want you to consider. Which ones you accept is your call. The objectives of the missions I've added are prisoner rescue, facility sabotage, and high value target elimination. Probably all a walk in the park for you, but they should help you get back on your feet. I put the mission details on a cassette tape. Refer to it if you decide to accept the mission. We'll receive GMP for completing missions, and extracting soldiers and prisoners will boost our ranks. Building up Mother Base is the first step to achieving our goal. If that means wet work, so be it. We're gonna have to get our hands dirty. I hope you're rested up, because we're not stopping. Not until the pain is gone. The future of Diamond Dogs is in your hands. We're counting on you, boss. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely making it sound like you cannot ignore Mother Base. I mean, it's something that you have to make sure that you spend some time on and kind of integrate into your playthrough. I mean, I don't know to what extent you can get that process automated, so you still, you just go and do your missions. You don't really bother kind of getting new recruits. It somehow kind of fixes itself, I don't know. But we'll have to see. Right, so I'm just going to keep it simple and just start with the next one. I guess in the same way, yellow ones are ones that you have to do and whites are probably ones that you don't. They'll probably appear at some point. Mission accepted. Heading to Afghanistan. Let's do it. Oh. Okay. I like the screen. <laughs> Alright. Primary weapon, I guess I don't have a second one anyway, right? This is going to take time to kind of build up. So weapon-wise, I don't think there's anything I can do with it. Myoelectric prost prosthesis, prosthesis or prosthesis for snake? Press the CQC button while sprinting to unleash a devastating punch. Wow, so that's something Vulcan would have. Support weapons, again, I don't think... I have anything new. Items. My cardboard box is already there. Everything's equipped, so there's nothing I can actually do at this point for equipment. Select buddy. D horse. Yeah. The vehicles as well. Alright, so once we actually fill out this stuff, it's going to look pretty good. And you're going to have a difficult time kind of deciding what to choose. You can even change your playable character, or is that just a look? Okay, uh, let's let's go. Just get on with it. Deploying. All right. Pressing the ready button while in cover allows you to lean out from behind and. Yeah, th th this is exactly what I've been trying to do. I think I managed to pull it off once, but it's something I tried to use a little bit more. My initial tactic is going to remain kind of trying to stay low, 
uh, try and stay in cover, trank people, and uh, send them off to Mother Base. That's the that's the goal. And then when I get seen, I'll just go nuts. <sighs> Your target is a Spetsnaz detachment commander. Your orders are to take him out. With skills like his, it'd be a shame to waste him. But I'll leave the method up to you. Boss, make your way to Deshago Calais and eliminate the target. When I say move, does that mean he's gonna jump out of the helicopter? I don't I don't want him to injure himself. To be honest, as a buddy, I'd probably just have quiet every time because he's probably a good sniper. Based on the fact that she uses a sniper. Oh yeah. Here we go. Big boss is in town once again. Alright. To be honest, once I can start bringing characters with me, quiet seems to be. We can use compounds from plants to make medicine or poison for use in new weapons and equipment. Take a look at the plants list on your iDroid to see which ones we need. Then go find them if you get the chance. It'll keep the staff happy too. Yeah, lots of pretty flowers for the staff. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to run around and try and find plants. If I run into anything, I'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll probably just have quiet with me most of the time so we can uh, just have a sniper, especially for assassination missions. Nothing better. Provide some good cover as well, hopefully. Ah, I love the tranquility of just kind of riding around. I really do. I appreciate it's not the most fun thing to watch, but it's something I've got to do. I don't know why the sky is this colour. I mean, it's the, it's the colour of a sky that has a lot of sky, has a lot of uh, light pollution. But around here, you shouldn't really be getting any. So. But I guess then it'll probably be too dark. I right, can sprint a bit now. This makes a hell of a lot of noise. He probably shouldn't be shouting every time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, whoa, I saw something there. I have to get off the horse every time. Diamond in the rough. Those are raw diamonds. Collecting them as assets will raise our GMP. Right, I need to. I wish I came from the other side. Okay, it's an interesting setup down there. You have arrived. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. All right, we'll leave Horsey over here. You've arrived at the objective. Your target should be somewhere in that outpost. And don't forget, he has a Spetsnaz recon detail with him. Keep your guard up. Now that's what I call a vantage point. Beautiful. If this was me, I'd just, just sit here and enjoy the view. Fuck the mission. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to leave it here, and I guess if I need to start again, then I'll come back here again. I will end the session here, and the next one will be trying to take out this guy. Obviously, I'm going to try and trank him so that we can make use of his skills. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.